Hey, welcome everyone. Here we are back on Friday with another episode of Designing Adobe XD. And today, uh, well actually first off, uh, for those of you who haven't come joined us before, I'm Talon Wadsworth, I'm the lead designer of, of Adobe XD. And today we're doing something different. This is actually a first for, for the Friday show. I actually have a, a guest with me today who is not actually part of the Adobe XD team, but I have the very talented uh, Marvin Schweibold with me. Hi, guys. Uh, if you've been paying attention this week on Adobe Live, he has been, of course, here making amazing stuff, just beautiful stuff in Adobe XD. Uh, and of course, I, I love to see that. Thank but you so Marvin, much. Thanks, thank for, so much. thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me. Uh, so like, uh, Marvin, uh, you know, like you're, uh, tell me a little, tell us a little. Well, let's just say, first, let's say hi to everybody, and then I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself sure. here before yeah, we let's, get going. Let's go for it. Uh, what's going on, everybody, in the chat? I see, of course, Matthias, I mean, always great to see you in the chat. Ahmad, Devin, thanks for joining us. I saw, I just saw that you've been with us all week. It's exciting to see that, and you've been taking the challenges. Been great to, the, to see, see the work coming, rolling in from all those challenges this week. How's everybody doing? Welcome. If you uh, have any questions for us, uh, let us know. If you have questions about XD, if you have questions about uh, about UX design just in general. Uh, Marvin was just telling me a little bit about some of his background. He's got a really interesting background. So if you have any questions, again, just more design related, like we're always uh, we're always uh, willing to, to chat, talk shop. Yeah. So today, um, yeah. So Marvin, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I I think I started I uh, started working in the industry about like six five to six years yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, I come from a, a background of just like typography design mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. analog design, so mm -hmm. I was working a lot in like you know just the branding sector, just mm -hmm. like yeah business cards, your traditional design pursuit, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah studied yeah. visual communication, mm -hmm. and it, it's all yeah a very traditional approach. Yep. Uh, and then I guess at some point I just started realizing that um, I wanted to work more with interactions, you know, and mm, I wanted to mm -hmm. make work that wasn't only that wasn't only beautiful or static, but that could actually move, mm, you yeah, know, and there was, yeah, a, there was yeah. a nice collaboration with developers and motion designers mm -hmm. when you design something and you give it to someone else in the creative process mm. and they tweak it and they keep tweaking it and tweaking it until it goes live mm -hmm. and then the user starts using it, you know, mm -hmm. and they and they start understanding what you're doing and it's kind of, it's a really nice feeling, you know. It's fascinating. So, I know it is. I know yeah. it is. I, mean, I think uh, you're totally right. Like, um, you know, my background uh, was is just design in yeah. general as well. Yeah. Did a lot of, of course, branding work and rock and roll posters kind of back yeah. in my previous studio gig. But but I totally agree with you. I think there's something about the collaboration that happens when yeah. you're working. Again, it takes a lot of people to make a website or a mobile app, right? It definitely, depends on yeah. you know design and engineering, yeah. and then of course then it becomes this this, this collaboration with the users as yeah. well in of a way, course. and how they use and interpret the work and, and and the ideas that are communicated and if they're being successful or not. And yeah, yeah I, it's a fascinating problem. I, I, I totally I've I've followed a very similar trajectory. Yeah, and I think also you know there's so much you can hide mm -hmm. in in design when it's interactive. There's so yeah. many mouse overs or things that can appear while the user's scrolling down a page yeah. or, and it's so delightful I guess you yeah. know and, yeah. and you can always you can you can hide and delight a user so easily with with tiny little animations and nuances mm -hmm. and tweaks that I think it just uh, you know I think that's that's just something really really cool yeah. and interesting uh, yeah I spent the last um, 18 months working mm -hmm. at uh, Watson Design Group in oh, Los nice. Angeles yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, worked with some really really talented um, designers and developers there Excellent. it was really really cool um, yeah, and right now I'm in Berlin, freelancing. Mm -hmm. uh, which That's is a cool city. That's a cool, cool city. city. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy that. Well, nice. Um, well, well, thanks for coming over from Berlin. That was the <laughs> other thing. I know Dude, you, yeah. you you got a little trouble got, getting off the tarmac that first yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> uh, flight was canceled. It took oh. it took 24 hours longer than expected. Oh my goodness, that's the worst. Well, I'm so glad you made it here. And yeah. I mean, you touched on so many topics there that, that just like you know, of course, like. I get all geeked out about, yeah. you know, I mean, I definitely, um, you know, I think sometimes, you know, UX design in particular can feel a little business heavy, can be, feel a little almost overly pragmatic. Yeah. And, yeah. But I think there are ways in which, you know, of course, having a more traditional design background where, you know, designers will use any tools that they have to communicate an idea or of communicate course. meaning. Yeah. And sometimes that meaning doesn't have to be explicit, you know, it can For be sure. telegraphed to you through through visuals or through typography or form or through motion and interaction. Yeah. Yeah. It's really exciting. Uh, all right, excellent. Well, uh, you know, this also, I gotta say, was was this, you've just started working in Adobe XD as well, right? That, that's something, yeah, I wanted, I, we were talking about earlier is, um, 
I did a project a few a few months ago in mm -hmm. XD, and it was a lot of fun. And I mm -hmm. started I started um, getting kind of like familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And um, then when I heard about you know the UX live show, and Michael reached out, and we started talking. I really like got into it really mm -hmm. really deep and started working a lot. You know, mm -hmm. in XD, and it's just this this lightweight. You know, it's just vector based. It's easy to use, and the in for me the just the iterative process. Mm -hmm. You know, of um, okay, choosing this font, choosing this body text, doing it again, doing it again, and just like kind of like creating and tweaking everything. Mm -hmm. It's just super fun, you know. And I think, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna stay. I'm definitely gonna stay in XD. <laughs> well, and work for I mean, I'd love to hear that. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, of it's course. course, it makes them, You know, you're sitting here talking to, you know, and like XD has really been like in my focus really for the last you know four years now. And um, you know, you touch on a lot of things, and and, I, and it's it's again this this Friday show is really about exposing to. To, to everyone, all the designers in the community, really just giving them some in, insight into how yeah. we work as a team. Yeah. And I think a lot of the things that you touched on were things that we actually, like if I pull up some of our old decks, yeah. like there are foundational principles that we wrote down that really relate to some of the things you're saying. And, yeah. and you know, on the speed of iteration, you yeah. know, we had this tagline, one of our first, you know, like you gotta have a good tagline, yeah. was uh, design at the speed of thought. That's perfect. That right? was, was really like our like foundational statement, which yeah. is like, if we're going to go and create a brand new tool from nothing, really, like, you know, we, we're not going to go build it on top of any previous code base uh, or any, you know, previous sort of framework. Like, how do we, you know, think critically about, you know, what a tool should be yeah. and, and all the steps that you would take to execute on design? How do we just kind of like rethink that and actually kind of like get rid of all the little things that slow you down? Exactly, whether, yeah. you know, like, menu options or you know sub menus or you know multi-step processes just to make something that should be very simple very straightforward yeah. you know and and so that principle really infused like all of our early work yeah. and, and all of our work since then and i think you can you can you definitely see that when you start working in xd when you start using your you know just just even the the difference between the design and the prototype mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the, the way you can switch between these these parts how 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 simple and and Easy. This this whole kind of like you know your toolbox here is there's mm -hmm. there's not there's not too much in there that can like you know get you all confused. It's just it's really like broken down to the basic mm. steps. You know to the to the really the, the tools you really need to work, mm. and then anything else you can always just like tweak and come up with like little shortcuts if you need something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's well. Like I said, like I mean, <laughs> it's it's always nice. I think when you're talking to someone who you know I think who in, in, intuits some of those ideas, and I don't want to get like too deep in that, but yeah, it's 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 something that we think really hard about, which is that you know we want XD to be usable to people sure. of any any levels. Yeah, you know, any design. Yeah. If you're a pro, if you're a beginner, uh, and but we really wanted to tell I think something about the process. So even if you if you don't know about you know, the process behind UX design, um, you know the, X, the XD actually starts helping you orient yourself yeah. to the process that it would take to, to make a, a mobile application or an interactive website or experience. And yeah. so even at the top when you see you come in and you see design prototype, so these, exactly. are these discrete modes, yeah. and they actually tell you that like first you need to create the, the, the big pieces of it, and then yeah. you need to describe the relationships between them. Yeah. And that, that that really is part of the process. And then actually going all the way to the sharing function as well. It, yeah, that's, that, a, like, that's a really good feature right? as well. Like yeah. that's a, that's part of the design process is you know creating something and then getting feedback. Exactly. Like the only way you get better and the only way you make your design better is by sharing it with someone and getting them to interact with it and experience it and give you feedback. And then you can take that and put that right back in yeah. to your design and make it even better. And even, you know, like just the... Um, What's this one called here? Again, you know, that's a preview button here. When yep. you when you click on your design and you have it here, you know, there's so mm -hmm. much going on. There's mm -hmm. so much going on that still like, kind of like takes your mm -hmm. eye mm -hmm. off the actual design. So you click here, and then you can actually just like scroll through it, look at it. You know, it's your 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 focus is just on this page, and then you can go back into into your design process. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for prototyping. You know, you you start here, you kind of preview it, you start mm -hmm. scrolling down, you can look at stuff, kind of like. Oh, that is very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I was working on this earlier. Just, just a little, a little mm -hmm. thing. And even mm -hmm. you know, your when your mouse tells you, okay, this part is interactive. Mm -hmm. Now you can click on something. Mm -hmm. And I love what you were saying about um, how you guys think about the whole creative process because I think one of the most important things while mm -hmm. you're designing is sharing it. Mm -hmm. You need to get feedback. Either yeah. it's from your client, it's from your mm -hmm. peers, it's from your superiors, it's from people in your team. You need to be able to share it easily. People have to be able to respond to it, mm -hmm. look at it, and. It, 
it's the collaboration, I think, yeah. that's yeah. really important and that needs to always be, um, you know, it needs to be priority one. Yeah, I think that's, definitely. That's something and we're kind of hearing some of that, you know, like, I mean, you know, is, how has, is, uh, you know, critique or feedback been important in your workflow? You know, yeah. everyone out there on the chat. Eric was saying, you know, that's why, you know, he wants his portfolio to be reviewed. Right? Exactly, yeah. The only way you're going to get better is if you know you get that feedback, and hopefully you get it from. I mean, it's always important to get it from the from the right people and sure. get it in a very constructive way. Yeah. Um, but you know that's that's uh, one of the um, one of the reasons why I'm always a big advocate for for schooling. Yeah. Of course, definitely. is because you're in a kind of safe environment where you learn to you know to share your process and to get honest feedback in that setting. Yeah. Um, and of course, as you gain more experience, I think you're able to you're 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 able to make your own decisions and give yourself your own feedback as you're designing, but sharing never stops being important, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's that's been a big story with XD too, which is like, you know, actually like hearing directly from, you know, designers who are using XD uh, from the very beginning, you yeah. know, that when we when we launched the original beta, the whole goal was to to get feedback immediately from designers, rather than again, we could have held on to XD until it was, you know, all the features were complete exactly, and yeah. the whole thing. But yeah. you know, like we knew that the only way that XD was going to become the tool that, that we wanted it to be was to get it out and actually get feedback from designers directly. Like that's the only way. Help, let that's them only, help us build. That's it. only yeah. that's the only way it really grows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's the only way I kind of think it grows in the right direction. Because keeping it contained for too long in the, like the, the lab mm -hmm. and just working and working on it, yeah. if it's never out, if people don't use it, yeah. it's what's the point of yeah. it, right? Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think you guys are doing a really oh, good well, good job. Nice to hear. So um, yeah. let's, let's uh, Devin had a little thing here I wanted to see. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think you know Devin. You know, talk. Think he's talking about the opportunities that it offers people. Um, you know, again, like that's really something we thought about. Like we've really created XD at a time when I think. Um, we're in that full transition of the design industry. Yeah, you know, like definitely. I think there still is always going to be a role for branding, for uh, you know, for doing all the collateral for a client, or yeah. you know, creating environments and there's and you know, designing books or posters. There's always going to be that, but more and more, the mode of communication is like yeah. through these interactive experiences, and and that's of course why we wanted to create XD because we saw that need. Yeah, um, and of course, you know, we saw that need. You know, myself as I was working internally uh, here. At Adobe and doing my job, and so you know, we wanted to make it something that people could feel like they could transition from, whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator, and they could feel at home, and they could also uh, accelerate their learning. Yeah, you know, and and be successful, and you know, in, in new ways of communicating. Yeah, so yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah, and especially coming from Photoshop, you know, it's like yeah. I think most people I know, everybody loves designing for for the web in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And the artboards are a cool way of doing that, and you know you have the responsive states and mm -hmm. everything. You can mm -hmm. you can you can really work on it, and it and it can be it can be a lot of fun. Mm. But at at a certain point, if the if the if the website or the app just gets too big, you know, there's just if if it has twenty different frames or twenty different screens, it's just it's it's too heavy. Mm -hmm. you, and mm -hmm. I, I love the way that you guys just created something new mm -hmm. in the same Adobe family mm -hmm. that kind of gives people the freedom, you yeah. know, to just. Work yeah, with and yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's definitely a goal. So uh, tell us a little bit about your experience this week. Show us maybe some of the stuff you've been designing, and sure, some of the, sure, the, sure maybe no. there's some interesting moments you could highlight where, um, you know, like because you talked earlier about you know fast iteration, you know, and yeah, you talked, definitely, uh, you know about like where you were duplicating a bunch of artboards and trying a bunch of ideas. Uh, and how how did you go about doing that in XD? Maybe sure. give some people who maybe are new to XD some insight into how you were using you've been using XD this week. Yeah. So first of all, I love like you know the overview of everything. Once you start designing, you have a lot of screens. You can really kind of like zoom out and have and have your whole, I guess your your whole user. Just that big view. That that, big, that uh, hundred thousand foot view of your design. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And we were talking about this yesterday as well. I think the first thing I always start with is building like a style kit mm -hmm. when I start designing. And mm -hmm. you have you have it in XD here. You know you can add all your elements here. Mm -hmm. But I love kind of like visualizing it. It's only like for me personally. You know. Yeah. Just so I, just so I can see the how these fonts and these sizes kind yeah. of like collaborate with each other you're and work thinking, with each you're other. You're thinking about that system. Exactly. Because yeah, you yeah. you've you've done it enough. To, like you've had that experience. You've done it enough times that you said, hey, this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the with the with the pieces of that system. Exactly. Yeah. And I think especially coming from like, you know, corporate design and, mm -hmm. and corporate branding, yeah. it's kind of always the first step you do. Yeah, but, yeah true. And yeah, I, th yeah, I think yeah. even sometimes people go, oh, let's scribble something or wireframe it. That's cool. But after you started wireframing, you need to mm -hmm. really like sit down and, and, and think about what are the building blocks of this website mm -hmm. or of this app? What am yeah. I going to use? And it's also your rule book. 
You know, yeah. it's yeah. You, you're supposed to build these rules for yourself, and mm -hmm. then you're supposed to stick to them to keep everything consistent and coherent mm -hmm. to the design. You know, yeah. um, so you got your you got your laid out your style guide here. Exactly. Yeah. You started adding some elements to the assets panel. Yeah. I, I work with the assets panel. I feel like that's the one feature that's actually probably my favorite feature. Yeah. Oh yeah. Assets I, assets I, I love I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it as well. It's it's beautiful. You can you can add an icon from. Photoshop or from Illustrator, mm -hmm. and then you can add it to your symbols here, and it's automatically just saved. And you can and just drop. drag and drop yeah. it from there. You know, yep. that's just something yeah, that's I nice. love as well. Uh, yeah, from there I started creating like this intro page where I was working with like some stroke fonts. Mm, nice. And then you would kind of like go into this really long, I think, but very, um, very interesting mm -hmm. and kind of like unique uh, landing page mm -hmm. where you would you know get some get some feedback on the on the product and what what are you even buying here? What is this even about? Mm -hmm. Um, and I uh, very editorial, got a very editorial kind of look and feel. You got exactly. some nice imagery involved yes, in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a great typeface. I love that e. Yeah, this is <laughs> very distinctive. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, man. I um, Zarya uh, had a question about. So last time on the stream, we actually created a plugin, and I just was talking with the developer, and I think the plugin Zarya should be available. If if everything went well, we, we wrote a plugin live on the stream last time. It oh, should cool. be in the go check out the plugin manager. I haven't looked at it today, but it should be available. If it's not available today, it should be next week. You should be able to just download it from directly inside of XD. It's called a uh, color blend. Mm. You'll be able to blend your colors. Nice. Uh, nice. When you select, you know, say like you have a red and a blue, and then you can select a bunch of objects in between and you can blend and fill those objects with the, like the blended color. Cool. Yeah, we should look yeah. at that. Yeah, that, that definitely, definitely. Really interesting. Oh, well, I, uh, I've got it running here on my on my machine, so. Okay. Yeah, we can switch in a yeah. second. Um, you know, and then basically you have to kind of like build all, um, you know, all the like, Important parts of a website like an about page or FAQs. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of stuff here, I think, was kind of interesting. I didn't show this yesterday, but I built this in, in Photoshop and then just imported it. Oh, nice! You know, I was using the same yeah. fonts, but yep. I really like this kind of like syringe that they this company uses to like extract a fragrance from a bottle. Oh yeah! And it was it was so oddly looking that I just wanted to put the type uh, you know behind it. So this is something that you definitely have to kind of like work on. And did you in, import? In did you import it from Photoshop, or did yeah. you put it through the library? Uh, I didn't do it for the right. library. What yeah. I did is, what I still use that trick where I just yeah. like I make a rectangle, the yep. certain size yep. I wanted, yep. and then just drag it just in, drag and it in. automatically fills. That's a great. Way and to then do it you too. know, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, and then I mean the whole kind of like catalog I think is also like really interesting where you kind of like choose. Yeah, are you a man? Are you a woman? What's mm -hmm. what brand? What product type? What scent family yeah. do you want to choose? Um, and then and how do you add it kind of like mm -hmm. to your calendar? You know, yeah. because the whole goal of this website is that you get twelve fragrances. A year, yeah, and you yeah. kind of get a little bottle each month, and you kind of can pick, oh, drop, nice. drag and drop these, and choose where you want to use Very them. Nice. You know, I think, and you're really seeing your system in play here. Maybe talk a little bit more about, like, uh, maybe on one of these screens, yeah, highlight like what's in use from the from the assets panel. Have you ever done that where you right click and you say highlight on canvas? Uh, I think I. I think so. Um, let's see. Let's see if where you're where you're utilizing your your kit of parts, your style guide, yeah. sort of on some of these screens. I think that'd be kind of interesting to see for everyone. And, and someone was asking um, the name of the fonts as well. The chap, faces. chap, chap. Very nice. That's what it's called. Yeah. This font here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to say because I was iterating so much and rebuilding. Oh this, yes. I, I sometimes think I maybe broke it up. Yep. But that definitely can happen sometimes. Yeah. There you go. So this, these are all definitely headline four. Yep. And I think, yeah, like you said, if you right click it and so highlight, highlight on canvas, canvas, you'll be able to see it. So maybe not in this, maybe this is where you you were iterating so quickly sometimes yeah. that, yep. But yep. I also actually have a question. I yep. think the reason I was doing this also is because I, I started building the style guide. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Here, yep. on, on the black background. Oh yeah. Hence and then my typography white. is white, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's kind of like, here I can kind of like choose. But then when I when I when I uh, you know when I click on somewhere like there, yep. change it to that. It changes yep. it to so white. Yeah, so you would you would do uh, maybe a, new, a style that was the dark style as well. Exactly. Yep. I would have to do that, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Maybe in the future, though. I mean, that's kind of interesting. Would you do you actually think about them as as two parts of the same whole? You know what I'm saying? Like they're almost like different, di like they're related at size. Yeah. But they're like different versions, and those can actually be like. Would you want those to be separate styles in the style panel, or would you like them to be the same, but yeah. just like options for the same? Maybe, maybe options, toggle, right? That you can toggle yeah. them or something. That could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, it's it's easy because I, I'm only using black or yeah. white. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, but, but you know, like that, that is like that is like the the most. Uh, the top use case, really, like you have a light version and a dark version, right? And I know that a lot of people are very 
interested to see a dark UI version of XD. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's definitely been requested. Oh, so yeah. we and, yeah. and our, yeah, yeah. our like we have a big style guide that we work with called Spectrum that's been an Adobe one. Yeah. And there actually are two. There's the light version and the dark version. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So that would be actually really yeah. interesting to see mm. to like um, yeah know, change it's... the colors and have like a night version. Yeah. You? And be able to maybe just like toggle it, you know, in from the assets panel. So it's yeah. not and today you'd manage it as like two separate styles. But in the future, maybe again like because it's your H1. If yeah. you ever change the size of your H1, you would want it changed for both colors. Both color oh, rates, for sure, right? definitely, yeah. It's kind of interesting thing. I though. think yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. Also, when we we're talking about like um, just this iterative process, this was something I was working on last week a little bit, just to you know, just to get it kind of like really to tweak it and make it like really beautiful. And mm -hmm. obviously, you I always work with a grid. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's for oh me, yeah. That's so like, talk about the grid. Talk about how you're using the grid here. I think that um, was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean. What I what I always make sure is that my you know that my margins you can see are 75, 75, 75, 75. These are yep. always exactly the same. You know yep. they kind of build so they kind there. of build the frame for mm -hmm. everything I'm working mm -hmm. in. Yep. And so I try to make sure nothing goes outside the frame mm -hmm. unless you want to break it on purpose. Like for instance with this yep. huge typography, you know. Yeah. And then I try to make sure that everything is also aligned to my columns. Yeah. So in this case, I wanted to use like a very editorial, or editorial kind of like newspaper style mm -hmm. for this article and have like this really thin, easy to read mm -hmm. block, you know, but I yep. wanted it also to be kind of like consistent to, to mm -hmm. this, yeah. to the to the whole um, uh, grid. And, and this is going to be kind of. consistent. You're also applying this, these is kind of the same grid across all your different screens. Oh yeah, well, right? exactly. Yeah. Each each screen has exactly the same grid. Yep. And that's kind of like also then your test, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you have to make sure that everything you design is it needs to be on the same grid, so this can definitely change. Tell, you know? tell, tell, but it, dig into that a little bit more. Talk about that, like so. Uh, why? So tell us about the importance of of the grid and creating that structure for a user. Okay, like when, so user when you when you when you think about this kind of stuff in a branding and corporate design yeah, perspective, yeah, yeah. right? When you're when you're trying to brand a company mm -hmm. and you're trying to build an image for it, yeah. people need something to hold on to. It needs to be consistent. You mm -hmm. know, every Apple computer you have will always have the logo at exactly the same place and yeah. behind it. You know, you'll yeah. never have two MacBooks which are from the same year of, or the mm -hmm. same uh, model mm -hmm. have that change. Yeah. It's the same with the MacBook Pro. Typography on the front of the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of, of the of the product, and it's because I think it's very important to people and in general to just have consistent kind of like rules and styles people mm -hmm. can can kind of hold on to, and especially visually, visually, visually really sure. orient them exactly, yep. and especially when you take that kind of like idea yeah. and reflect it onto the onto interactive websites. Mm, yeah. You know, when you yep. start when you start. Say moving from screen to screen. Uh, no, no, it's not moving from yeah, screen. Yeah. To, it's for, it's when the user starts yeah. using the website. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. he needs to have he needs to be sh he needs to make sure that the menu is always in the same corner because he learns. Yeah. You know, yeah. he'll learn. Oh, that's where my menu is. Yep. He needs to know that a uh, that a call to action, like for instance, we have over here, is always exactly the same size mm -hmm. because he needs to be able to see. Okay. Uh, this is my see more, my explore, my yep. buy, my. That's the thing I'm going to click on. That's and the every thing time I click I see on. That, I'm going to click on it. Exactly, there and I'll go. know what to yeah. do. And then when you start, you know, and, and you can see it here as well. These these um, there's a lot of variations. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still using the same grid for everything. Like for instance, here, this is a page where you can like collaborate with UniQ. Mm -hmm. But the spacing I'm using here, this layout here, it's exactly the same as I'm using here. Oh yeah. You know that's what really, I mean? That's really cool to highlight. And, yeah, and yeah, it's something, really like and that. these and these parts yeah. are completely different. But the yeah. user will understand how to read, mm -hmm. how to look at it, mm -hmm. how to kind of like um, digest information, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and how to how to work with it. And I think that's that's something Im Im important to always keep in mind. And you yeah, know, if you t if you put on the grid here, you can see, can you see this it? is always aligned. Yeah, it's right there. You know, uh, and and I was talking about this yesterday um, with a friend, and he was also asking me about like these grid systems and why do you work with them yeah. and stuff. And I said it's also Faster, because yeah. grid systems answer or answer a lot of questions for you. Yes. Like if you, if you if you if you're worried about the size of this button, if you don't know how, how large to make it, either you can look at some other examples, mm -hmm. or you can say, okay, I'm, I'm not going to make it more than three than columns width. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I you mean, can, and I then and that's a rule you make you make yeah. up for yourself because that's the grid you're working in. Yep. And when you work on the next website, your grid can look totally different. Mm -hmm. And that also kind of, as a designer, mm -hmm. gives you a unique kind of edge. Yeah. You know, and makes your work kind of, I guess, stand out yep. compared to other people totally. who al always use the same grid maybe for yeah. a website. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I totally know. Yeah. I, I love that we're getting into this because again, this is like 
these are those like uh, again more very designery topics that again I think that it, if um, that really comes through experience, you know, yeah, um, definitely really comes yeah. through again. Sometimes that, that could be the importance of you know going to school or going through a program to really kind of understand again like the role of grids when it comes to creating form or design Definitely. and how the grid actually is communicating in its own way. Yeah. Space, space uh, layout is communicating just as much as images or typography. Yeah. Uh, and those things all have to be, those are all tools that designers can use to communicate to a user, to Definitely. help them orient themselves, help them navigate very complex sets of information sometimes. Yeah. Um, and really just kind of give them those wayfinding moments. Yeah. You know, being like, this again, this is where you're going to this is a thing that you can click on. This is this is where the menu is always going to be, so you can always get back to where you were. Yeah. And I think um, you know, as we start layering more features like motion and interaction, you know, there's something with XD where you know motion and interaction starts to become part of that system. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be some people also say, oh, it's great, the brands should now start be you know, branding motion and interaction. So when you, you know, you interact with, uh, with say, an app, yeah. you know who it comes from. Oh, yeah. like, oh, that's a Microsoft app, or yeah, oh, that's of course, a Apple. Of course. And know, that's what they do, so right? That's totally what they do. Yeah. Uh, I want to say hey, hi to a few people there in the chat. There's Anel showing up again, some of the regulars. Chris, great to see you in there. Eric, how's it going? Uh, of course, Howard, always seeing Howard, Mr. Howard Pinsky, everyone. He, Howard just dropped a really amazing UI kit. If you haven't really played around with uh, with motion or interaction in XD, Howard just created a really amazing uh, kit for animation. Cool. So go download that. Um, maybe we'll get that link posted. Howard will post it up there so you guys can go check it out. Really amazing work, as as always, Howard. Doing great work. So, um, yeah, so, you know, um, yeah, I really, again, as you're looking at the site and, and you're using the, you know, the assets panel to build that system, I mean, I think that's why this this site really, I think, ends up with such a beautiful result. Again, yeah. like you said, like you've uh, anytime you can, I think, whenever you're given some constraints, and yeah. I always love, you know, Jack White when he was first coming up with the White Stripes, I had an interview with him, and he's like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I gave myself the constraints that we were only going to wear, you know, red, white, and black on stage. Yeah. So every night when I went on stage, I didn't have to think about what I was going to wear. It was. One of those three colors. Yeah, that that's, was it. That's a good example. You that's know? kind of like, that's uh, yeah. You answer questions. You have answer, questions answered for yeah. you. You work faster. You know. Yeah, you don't absolutely. have to think about where do I put this? Where should I put this? Yeah. And 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 it, and it gets you. It gets you thinking. Uh, like you were saying earlier about just like. The, the relationship mm -hmm. objects and type has on, on the whole page, yeah. you know, Absolutely. and how much to put on onto it and how and how not to overload mm -hmm. a page, you know, mm -hmm. that's something I think is also like really important. I whenever was whenever in school, I would do like a presentation, you know, mm -hmm. I would have to do a presentation. I would show mm -hmm. it to my dad beforehand yeah. and he would always have this rule for me and he'd say, don't put more than seven lines of text on one card. Mm -hmm. Nobody will read it. Nobody will care. Yeah. And they'll just they'll be It'll be too much in general, yeah. and it's hard, you know. As a, you're you're doing your talk or you're doing your design, yep. and you it's your you know you're in the you're 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 in it, you know, yeah. and you yeah. want to show as much as you can and have as much information in there. And clients usually do, you know, mm -hmm. make oh, the yeah. logo bigger. We need the call to action button bigger. Yep. We need 50 menu items because that's just what we are, you know. And it's your job as a designer to kind of like clarify, to mm. clean it up, to tweak it, to make mm. sure that it's easy for everybody to understand, you yeah. know. And I think that's. That's um, something I always try to and keep in mind when I'm when I'm designing anything, really. Yeah, to be honest. And I, particularly I think when it comes to UX design, and that's again like um, you know with XD, you know, my my sub day job, we're designing yeah. something that's very complex. Yeah. Right. And there's any number of ways we could design it. Yeah. And there's of course any number of requirements that we get, and whether it's from engineering or uh, the business from the product side of things. And you know the one thing that I think we always try and do as designers is be Try and try and represent the user, right? Right. right. But yeah. of course, we're also not the users. Like I know way much more about this than, than any yeah. sort of typical designer, and I think very deeply about it. But uh, and of course, that's where you know we we use a lot of user testing, yeah. right? Like direct engagement or direct sort of you know testing of early prototypes, um, so that we know that we're and we also do a lot of foundational research as well here on, on the team where we're going out and we're you know talking to designers and seeing how work is changing for them and. Things they want to do, so that when we go sit down and design, that we are hopefully accurately representing them and their yeah. view. Yeah. Because again, we're too deep in it. Like we yeah. know too much. You, 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 know? you know too much to yeah. actually to like 
you know, zoom out and look yeah. at the yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah I think definitely. That's, that, definitely. I, that's a good way of w working around that problem, right? Yeah. And, a, and, a, and a figuring it out. I think that's really good. Well, this is an exciting conversation. I wanted to see, and we or we, been, we got deep in it. We got yeah. we got pretty deep talking shop. If anyone had any questions for us uh, here before we uh, are going to wrap up today, but um, yeah, or anything else that you wanted to highlight? Anything that any any what's what um. What uh, what if you were able to vote on a feature that yeah. you would like to see in XD that's not there today? What what would you what would you, what's kind of top of your list right now? Mm, okay, so as I'm always like really into grid systems, right? The the only thing right now that I really would love to see is mm -hmm. that uh, right now when you're designing and you have your layout, right? Mm -hmm. You have the layout, you have columns, gutter width, column mm -hmm. width, and you have square, right? Yeah. Yep. Which I think is also really interesting because it's kind of like you know going down into the pixels that you always see in Photoshop when you're yep. designing in Photoshop yep. and you can get down there you know you can really make out okay the uh, the base of my type will be here and I can count the mm -hmm. pixels I want until and until uh, my next kind of type log mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. starts but I would just love in general for uh, XD to use um, a layout to be able to use you know, you have your verticals, yep. but I yep. would love to have my horizontals mm, yeah. as well. Like your baseline grid. Yep. Like your baseline grid yep. that you have in Photoshop. Because you're already doing it way better than in Photoshop, because everything I do here, we talked about this as well, when I resize it, the grid, mm. mm -hmm. it understands what I'm doing and it works with me, you know? Yep. So yep. that's something really, really beautiful. Yep. And if I was now able to also see on the grid, you know, how my lines are aligned perfectly, that would be, mm -hmm. that's something I really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, that's, that's a good feature. Definitely something that I know I would make use of. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Colby had a question, um, you know, how would you go about showing uh, maybe an interactive design like this website, so if, on your portfolio? Oh, how yeah, would you, I mean, how would you do that? I mean, it depends on what you're trying to sell, yeah, right? Yeah, like, sure. It depends yeah. on, uh, are you trying to sell uh, it in your portfolio as, as you know, as editorial design, is it supposed to be really interactive? Mm -hmm. what, and whatever it kind of is, I love just working with Behance. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. my whole portfolio is Behance, you know? Yeah. yeah. Everything I do is just... It's a nice frame. Again, it so it takes away some of those decisions for It you. takes all the yeah. decisions away yeah. for you. You yeah. have your content creator and you, you can focus just... focus on, on yeah. that. Yeah. So I think to answer your question, Colby, I would always start um, working in Photoshop, uh, in Behance, mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm kind of like showing what I'm working mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like this, this story, you know, mm -hmm. that you're explaining. So you could, for instance, start... You've almost designed that layout, like on the portfolio site, as 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 its own design. Oh yeah, yeah, for, for sure. And right. then you start, you know, this is the grid I'm using. You yep. know, this is the elements I'm using. Yep. This is the style guide I'm using. And as the user kind of scrolls through, yep. kind of understands what you're working with. And then you can always export certain yep. interactive parts you're building in XD and add them as videos. Yep. So people videos, can click on true. it, you know, and yeah. and work with it. I think you can also. I don't know if you know this. You can also embed the prototype. In your Behance project. Ah, of course you. So you know, yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of nice. Of, it's a little little used feature, maybe for some it's pretty deep. But yeah, uh, yeah if you go up to the to the sharing, you'll actually find and the little code snippet. That I, you can I need it. to I need to do that because the the yeah. whole the whole thing I'm working on right now is definitely going to be uploaded onto my Behance. Yeah. And I was already thinking about some of this easing and transition I was mm -hmm. working on mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, I really wanted to add it to mm -hmm. the portfolio, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's good. Uh, yeah. It's, that's something really important. Once you start putting definitely. it into motion, it it gets this. It's the it's the ten percent on top of the hundred, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I yep. think it's really really cool. And you can also, uh, Colby, you can record the video from the preview window. Again, another oh. another one of my favorite little 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 details. Um, so when you launch and you click through your prototype, you can actually record the video there. And again, I think you know, as, as Marvin was saying, I think it's it's kind of what are your goals? Uh, what are you trying? What story are you trying to tell with your portfolio piece? Uh, maybe in some cases you want people to actually interact with it and actually s walk through the whole flow. And so in that case, maybe you embed it. And in other cases, if you, again, if you just want to show off the interactions, you can all, you can just record a video and embed that. Or like as Marvin was saying, maybe it's more about the editorial design of that page. Then maybe you just would take some screenshots of yeah. of the design and actually embed those. Um, but really, I think that's a good good rule of thumb is always to tackle your portfolio as if it's like a unique design challenge. Definitely. Right? Yeah. What am I trying? To, what am I trying to communicate? Who am I trying to communicate to? And really tailor the result to that. And also so. think about I think for me the most um, the best like kind of projects on Behance are are the ones that kind of like tell a story. It's almost mm -hmm. like you're trying to give a talk. Tell your story. You're trying to tell yeah. your story through yeah. your through your design, and, yep. and you always have to think about okay, if I'm going to create this, what what's the what, what what's the gain somebody has when he's yeah. looking at it? You know, yeah. what yeah, can definitely. this person? Is it a potential client? Uh, is it a, a, a fellow designer mm -hmm. or somebody way younger who needs to learn? Yep. What can they take away from this? Yeah. You know, and you have to explain to them all the steps you go through. Mm -hmm. And I think when they then scroll through the project, that's when they start saving it, liking it, sharing it with their friends, mm -hmm. and that's how it kind of becomes more popular. Yep. You know? Yeah. Definitely. 
Yeah. Well, that's I think that's that's really that was really that's a nice little little segment there. Yeah. Uh, to talk about again, like how you would you know you you present your portfolio. So definitely, yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, Marvin, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah. Uh, it no was worries. a pleasure meeting you. It was I mean, a pleasure I guess meeting was, you as like, well. Yeah. Great work. I mean. Oh, we going to twelve forty-five. I thought we were okay. Never mind. We're not leaving quite yet. Okay, we're ten minutes. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Well, then never well, mind. Here I'm just like jumping the gun. Paco's like, no, 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 we're not yet. <laughs> so actually, everybody was asking about uh, the per the, uh, the the plugin we made oh, last week. You so want to show it? Check, let's go check it out. I think you should show um, it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll hop over to my screen, and so uh, we have this. I mean, this rocks our engineer Peter Flynn, one of the engine, one of the first engineers to join the XD effort. Cool. Uh, once we kind of got going here. And he has been spearheading, uh, basically writing all the APIs for XD and creating the plugin ecosystem. And nice. so last week he had run a, a little session at Max, and we thought it'd be great if we had yeah, total false alarm. We're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. Uh, <laughs> so last week I had him on, and we 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 uh, we made a little prototype uh, nice. on the stream. Yeah. And so is. one of my favorite features from Illustrator, and I don't know if you've used this, was the bl with the blend feature. Of course. Right, where you could take two objects and the and their fills, and you could actually blend those together. Uh, you can and you would get yeah, you could have it on different shapes too. You could have it more in a stepped sort of shaped way. And we thought, well, I. Again, a lot of our inspiration for XD was from Illustrator, a lot of features that we loved in Illustrator. Yeah. And so um, what we wanted to do is, was actually create a um, create a blending plugin for XD, because we, yeah. we haven't been able to get around to making it a real feature yet, yeah. and we thought, well, let's just let's just. By do By the plugin. way, one of my most favorite features oh, right now, right? This is, I, this, is, this is where it started, really, yeah. for us, was Repeat Grid. That was... The, I think the feature that really galvanized um, like our work at yeah. the time. We could have done any number. We could have designed anything. We could have gone and made any features we wanted. Yeah. But the repeat grid really became our anchor, and it, it through designing repeat grid for you know mobile app designers and yeah. helping them work faster. The ways and the doing the things that they they are designing. Exactly. Um. Yeah. You know that really led actually really tactically to us having a a, a list of priorities. Yeah. Like. Okay, we're not going to work on that feature, like maybe a blend feature. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go and we're going to work on these features because that helps. That will help designers design this faster. And especially you know, going back to talking about consistency, uh, talking about style kits, kits, and all that kind of stuff, having the repeat grid feature mm -hmm. is just proof that any app you're working on needs to have certain elements that repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. You exactly. could fill them with different content. They could they mm -hmm. could look a little different, but in general, they want to have the same shape and size, the same fonts, and the same layout. Yep. Because because it's easier for the user that, that way yeah, to work exactly. with it. You know. Exactly. And yeah. they, I mean that was the pattern that we were really designing for. Yeah. You sure. know, our challenge when we when it started with a simple shape repeater tool. Yeah. And we said, well, that's that's not very interesting on its own. Yeah. But as we started to look at the things and the ways that designers were designing, yeah. right, um, they you saw these recognizable patterns. Yeah. And so again, we really turned a small, simple one shape repeater into this tool that could repeat a whole complex layout. Yeah. For and sure. then sync those changes and keep those changes in sync without having to you know, make a bunch of styles ahead of time. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so that yeah, that really, I mean, uh, it really is again like it kind of embodies like our whole approach you know, yeah. to, to designing XD. XD. So again, I have uh, some shapes here, and I have yeah. my two color stops on the end. Yeah. And the plugin uh, up here, it's going to be called. I think we we called it Color Blender. Yeah. And uh, it'll have its own. I designed a little icon with it and everything. But you'll just be able to select those shapes and select the shapes that you want to fill with the blended colors, and then you just hit Blend Colors, and it just nice. yeah. fills those shapes with again the the blended colors from those two endpoints. You know what very this actually nice, gets this is, this what this actually got, got me thinking on as well is yesterday somebody in the chat was asking if we go quickly back to my screen yeah um, somebody was asking um, how I chose my color palette oh yeah right yeah, yeah. and what I what I always um, what I always do in this case because I was able to shoot the campaign with a friend of mine Peter Montagnon like a really talented mm -hmm. photographer mm -hmm. we worked on the whole kind of campaign together mm -hmm. I, I will just take you know I will take the little uh, fill icon yep the little eyedropper there the little eyedropper yeah. there. And then I'll choose. I'll literally choose mm, hex yeah. codes from the pictures, yeah, and I'll have yeah. all my images. Yep. And and I think especially if you if you're then able to, you know, you have maybe your greens and your your beige and browns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you then use blend color, Together. you can you can actually make a huge co color palette. Mm -hmm. And and that could be interesting when you're thinking about interaction. Maybe a mouse over doesn't have the same. Green tone, yeah, and, you know what? That, it, yep, and then you that, can that work all those all yeah, those yeah. Uh, blended colors into yep. the whole design. Totally, 
Uh, that's, that's, I, think that's, I think that could be like a really good use case. That, that also actually. that also makes me think about one of my other favorite features yeah. from the Creative Cloud ecosystem was um, color.adobe.com. Did you ever use that? Color. That um, it used to be called Cooler. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. K U L E R. Now it's C O L O R. Adobe.com. Yeah, of course. And it's also now in the Capture app on iOS. But what you could do is actually take an image, like your image from your campaign here, yeah. and you could actually feed it into that tool, and it would extract a color palette. Yeah. And a color palette that sort of had you know, contrast. So it oh. pulled the dark and the light and the mid of course. and the, yeah, yeah. The, the vibrant hue, yeah. and now you have this color palette. Yeah, perfect. Uh, this is a challenge to anyone out there or anyone on the XD team listening. Someone needs to dis actually make that plugin. Yeah. So we can, you know, just select the image on the Canvas NXD and generate the color palette. Yeah. From it. I think that that, that would be really important. All right. If anyone <laughs> from the from the team is watching, I need that plugin. I want it back. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then pairing that with the Blender, uh, yeah, maybe, can be it can be yeah. really interesting. Maybe right? it's something. Yeah. Maybe it's something I need to work on. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I have, and I, I think it's it's so. something it's something it's as as important as choosing yeah. your type and oh, choosing definitely. your layout definitely. and everything. Yeah, is choosing yeah, yeah. the colors, colors you want to work with because yep. you don't want to work with too many colors. They don't want to be too different, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or, or, you know, we always talk about like primary colors, you know, when you're just talking about mm -hmm. colors when you go to like design school and people yep. teach you like, yep. you don't put these two colors together yep. because they're not primary colors, they don't work well together, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think uh, using uh, that color yeah. palette tool, you already have the website. I, I used to work with it a lot yeah. uh, until I at we'll, some point we'll, just... Let me go pull it up and we'll go check it out and talk yeah. about it because I, I think there's, uh, again, just uh, I, I love having like these resources available and again, like little, uh, again, uh, kind of again, things that people haven't really realized are there. But here is this uh, the the Adobe color color.adobe.com, and here as you move, you can move make your own custom palette, and it's sort of behaving by certain rules, and those rules are sort of set here. Your sort of color harmony. Yeah. And I can as I move one around, I can say, oh, I want a monochromatic theme. Ooh, nice. Right. Yeah, so yeah. now yeah. as I move this around. All of this whole color theme will stay monochromatic. Yeah, and the I same kind of area as well. Right? Yeah, cool. right? yeah. Yeah. My favorite feature here was I did this all the time was actually to import image. Um, so what you can do, and I think I have a bunch of stuff here on the desktop we can pull from. Oh, maybe this is this is actually might be really nice. Let's do this one. So I had this image that I loved uh, of you know, like um, you know like Greek statues that were actually yeah. painted. Yeah. And it's something that like we all sort of see them as white today, but they actually weren't at yeah. all. They were very vibrant and colorful. So I can choose this image. Nice. And you see, it's actually auto-populating and creating a theme from this image. Yeah. Uh, and then I can of course save that and then use that in my design work. How would that um, work? How would that work with a mood board? So you could start basically like like maybe something like you, you had like that image. Yeah. Let's say as a plugin, what you could do in XD, let's say if we, we sort of tapped into the stuff happening here in a color.adobe.com, rather than using the eyedropper tool, yeah. right, you would just select your image, run it, yeah. or choose again, do we want a colorful theme? Do we want a bright theme? Yeah. Do we want a muted theme? Yeah. And then maybe it just auto populates the global colors for you. Nice. Maybe yeah. that would be I think that would be amazing in XD. I I, I think so. that's I, I if nobody does, I'll, I'll work. I know, on that. I know. Seriously, like we gotta <laughs> yeah. make this. Somebody, yeah. we, one of us, uh, somebody's gonna make this. And so, and this was a thing that I used to do a lot. And one of the things that I did in my uh, my previous studio gig is I would go and, and find a bunch of uh, images that I really loved the colors in them. Yeah. And then what I would do inside of Illustrator is Illustrator has this really amazing feature that I keep trying to get into XD at some point, <laughs> which is replace color. Yeah. Where you could actually just take your design and swap out the color theme yeah. of it, the whole thing. So I would make my design, I'm like, well, I want to show the client some options here. And yeah. so I would queue up a bunch of color themes and I would do the replace color in Illustrator and it would generate that design as a as a new as a new design uh, with a new color palette. Yeah, and I mean, there there's something similar to that you you're using right now, right? Mm -hmm. You you're able to you're able to say that's my like call to action yeah. has the has the color here and yep. and I edit yep. I edit the color yeah. in yeah. my asset panel. It'll change it all yep. over the whole um, mm -hmm. the, the, my whole my whole like layout. You know, yeah, that's definitely. something I, I also I, really like. But especially yeah. um, that's something also it's good. To sell that, you know, to if it's this iteration, you know, you can show mm -hmm. them in black or mm -hmm. in white or in blue and say, hey, these are different options. I think all of them would work. What, yeah. what would you like? Yep. You know, and yeah. then you can piggyback off that and start exactly. a conversation again. And I if we can make important. that easy for you to, to again to iterate very quickly. Yeah. And as I used to think a lot, uh, think about you know Photoshop in particular, it was yeah. very, it was very it felt very destructive. Like if I made a change, it would. It would take me a, a minute to like get back to where I was if I didn't like it. You know. That's that's exactly why and, I love iterating in XD yeah, because. Yeah. 
it forgives you so quickly. You know, it, you can copy paste something yeah. and start messing around with it. It's so it's vector based. You know, it's so easy. easy and then you can back. just you can just mess with it. And if you don't like it, delete it. And yeah. that's something in Photoshop where I was like. Can we move this image over here? I'm like, it's really, oh. the image is really large. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a minute. It It'll take a few moments to do this. And then it, it also it kind of slows you down as a designer. It does. You know, in the, in the, in the, those, just in the process yeah. in general. I think. As those build up in the day, those matter. Those moments of slowing you down. Of course. Yeah. Like they matter. They, they, they say that, like, what was the one option that you didn't have time to try? Yeah. Right? So, and how, again, how could your idea would have could have been better yeah. if you had just tried that one more thing? Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and then it, you, you get stuck in this kind a circle because the more you want to iterate, yeah. the more upwards you create, yep. the heavier it gets, yeah. the slower it gets, mm -hmm. the harder it is to iterate. Yeah. You know, and then and you have to go back to something maybe, and then yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like speaking the same language. I like, think we are. Yeah, I think Mar we're on the same Marvin page here, right? Are like yeah. simpatico here. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, uh, well, definitely. we we now. I think I'm not jumping the gun. You're not jumping the gun no, anymore, we, right? We filled the ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Very easy. L L very L easy yeah. to do talking with you, Marvin, yeah. and with, of course, everybody in the chat. It's great to see you. Uh, next week, we're going to be on break, of course, for the holiday. But uh, we'll be back with Designing Adobe XD after the holiday. And uh, Marvin, a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for pleasure coming on. Pleasure to meet on. you, too. Yeah, thank you so much. chatting with you. And uh, yeah, let's, let's keep chatting. So, yeah, all right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you after Thanksgiving.